Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my Killer Reads A Thrill A Month book club review of Fiona Barton's The Widow. This was our pick for June uh, based on the list of Penguin's top thrillers of all time. And I have to say right up front that pretty much everybody in the group didn't think this book was much of a big deal and was really curious why it was on the list at all. Um, so up front, I want to ask you if in the comment section, you if you like this book, please let us know uh, why you did. Because um, it was not a crowd pleaser, I got to tell you. Um, it was okay. It was just run of the mill for me. But I described it in the chat in the group um, that... It read to me as if I was watching a true crime documentary where you already know what the crime is and you already know basically who did it and you're just sort of recounting the events leading up to it. Um, so there's maybe here and there there might be some tension uh, but mostly there's not really any suspense because you you pretty much know how it's going to turn out. There aren't any major twists at all and it pretty much shakes out as you would expect it to. The story uh, follows a woman named Jean, who is the widow of a man who has died, who was um, accused of this crime of kidnapping this little girl. And the story jumps between her point of view and then the points of view in the third person of a detective and a journalist who is following the case and the detective, of course, is trying to uncover the real cause, and he really believes that it's Jean's husband. And all the time I was reading it, I was hoping maybe it's not going to be Jean's husband. But as it progresses, it just narrows down into the fact that it's Jean's husband. So there's not really a lot of tension. Um, at the beginning of the book, there are other suspects. So you think maybe it might not be him, it could be other people. But then as Jean's story unfolds, and she's telling you her story you find out that she doesn't really miss her husband. He's actually died um, right in front of her, and she's kind of happy about it. Um, and I was hoping that Jean had something to do with it. And maybe she did. It's never really definitively stated whether or not she did. But there are so many other ways this book could have been written that would have been much more suspenseful and probably much more satisfying of an ending if, in fact, the husband didn't do it. Yes, I'm spoiling it for you, telling you the husband did it. But I think when you, if you were to read the book, <laughs> there would be no question in your mind that the husband was the killer. Nobody in the group was surprised at the way the book shook out, um, which was a real disappointment because um, I love reading new authors and I was hoping that this would be one in the thriller genre that I could maybe check out again. I'm not really excited to check out anything else by her, I have to say. It just wasn't... The writing was just not great. I mean, it wasn't a great story. The characters weren't really that compelling. The main character, Jean, was kind of um, very tropey and very... Um, uh, you just knew what... You just knew you've read her before, you know? She's been done before. Uh, and her portrayal as a person who can't get pregnant and who um, really wants a child, it's just all rote at this point. You've read it before, you've seen it on TV. There's nothing new or exciting about her. She was actually kind of bland and boring and kind of were sick of her after a few chapters, to be honest with you. Um, the husband was very controlling of her and we've seen that before in a lot of ways. So it just wasn't doing anything very interesting in my opinion. The detective and the journalist weren't really that interesting. I myself, I have to say, am not a fan of detective fiction. Luckily, this whole thing wasn't from that point of view, but those parts were just literally procedural detective stuff. And that's not a thing for me, so that wasn't really helping it <laughs> in my case. I thought the journalist point of view could have been more interesting, and I really liked the sort of bad badness to that character. Um, she was like a journal, like you would expect a journalist to be, pretty self-serving and all of that. But I think maybe of all the characters, she was probably the most interesting to me. But like I said, if I had written the story, I could have done something else with it that probably would have made it more interesting and more suspenseful. It was just plain not great. Uh, I'm going to give it two stars. Oh, another thing that this story did, which drives me up the wall, I think I've said this before on my channel, is that I can't stand it when in dialogue, a writer, um, an author, 
uses the character names over and over and over again. When I'm talking to you in real life, I'm barely saying your name at all. Um, maybe once here and there, but not in every single time I address you. I'm not saying your name. And in this book, the characters were always saying each other's names. And that drives me crazy. Uh, if you're an author and you're listening, please don't do that. <laughs> it's not natural, and it's really, really bad writing, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so it didn't have much going for you. I'm giving it two stars. It's, you know, not great. Not sure why it's on the list. So if you've read it, please let me know what your experience was with it, particularly if you liked it. I would love to know what it is about the story or the characters or the setting or the situation that... Uh, that made you fancy it because um nobody in the group seemed to so uh yeah not sure why it was listed as one of the best thrillers of all time um i'm very curious to know who on this penguin list chose these i'm sure it has to be just readers of some sort but i'm curious what kinds of readers they're using for these mostly we've had good reads in the um from the list um there was one that was pretty difficult, but I think all the rest of them, for me, were pretty good. So this is the only one that I really didn't care for. So, uh, yeah, again, just interested to know if you liked it, why, and why it's on the list. Anyway, and next month we're going to be reading a book that you might not think is a thriller at all. At least I didn't. I had no clue that it would be considered a thriller in any way. And that is um, Ken Kesey's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So for July, this is the book we're going to be reading. And I'm really interested to read this story. I probably saw this film when I was younger, way a long time ago. I don't remember anything about it other than ja that Jack Nicholson is in it. And I do know that Nurse Ratched is in it, um, but I don't know anything about it. I haven't seen any adaptations, even newer things. Um, so I'm really excited to get into this one. I am going to read the back. If you are interested in joining along in the read for this one, you would have to join my Discord, which I will leave the link to down below. It's super easy to join. It's free. And you can only join for this one if you want to, and then whatever. But there's a bunch of other books on the list that are in pretty interesting, too. Um, so here's the description of this book. In this classic novel of the 1960s, Ken Kesey's hero is Randall Patrick McMurphy, a boisterous, brawling, fun-loving rebel who swaggers into the world of a mental hospital and takes over. A lusty, life-affirming fighter, McMurphy rallies the other patients around him by challenging the dictatorship of Nurse, Nurse Ratched. He promotes gambling in the ward, smuggles in wine and women, and openly defies the rules at every turn. But this defiance, which starts as a sport, soon develops into a grim struggle, an all-out war between two relentless opponents, Nurse Ratched, backed by the full power of authority, and McMurphy, who has only his own indomitable will. What happens when Nurse Ratched uses her ultimate weapon against McMurphy provides the story's shocking climax. I mean, it does sound like it could have some thrillery elements, so... Uh, this I'm expecting to be really good, so hopefully it will be, um, get us back on track with this list of good reads. So if you want to join, like I said, hit the Discord link down below and come on over and read with us. It's fun every time, and I love to hear everybody's um, opinions on these books. So that's my video for today. That was my review of The Widow by Fiona Barton. Um, I hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up if you did, and subscribe to my channel if you would. I would truly appreciate it. And I'll see you on my next video. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye.